think about all the games in this series throughout the years, the rivalry, the Territorial Cup, take it back to 75. ASU, eighth in the nation, Arizona number 11. The great catch by John Jefferson right before halftime. ASU would go on to win. They finished the season ranked second in the country, David. And that play still holds up in the state of Arizona. I'm talking about Arizona and Arizona State. The biggest college football play of all time in this state. And San Diego Chargers, first round selection. Wide receiver, John Jefferson, Arizona State. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Air Coriel and your pilot, Dan Feltz, welcome to San Diego.
Over the building years, they gathered a stable of young thoroughbreds, like number 83, John Jefferson. The wide receiver from Arizona State was 78's number one draft pick and was blessed with a kind of body control and agility that no coach could teach. But the NFL offered another challenge, heavy traffic over the middle. So J.J. strapped on his goggles and proved that he could hold his own in the danger zone. Not since the days of a pass catcher known as Bambi could San Diego quarterbacks look to a receiver of such spectacular skill and daring. Jefferson... San Diego opened the season in Seattle with the offensive line, Dan Fouts and John Jefferson all running true to form. However, the charges were not just half lightning to hit the Cincinnati Bengals. Coriel's offense opened up and the defense shared each. The Chiefs came back to tie San Diego and send the game into overtime. Now Coriel called for character. On the last play of overtime with the final seconds leaving the clock, Fouts spotted a friend in the far corner of the end zone. The Chargers were learning what it takes to win. Fouts and company would find a way to win. John Jefferson caught another impossible game winner, and the astounding Super Chargers were 6-6 six and six with a shot at the playoff. Night against the Chicago Bears. Fouts returned and answered that question with a flurry of completions, 16 for 269 yards and two touchdowns. Seattle was the next victim of Don Coriel's white lightning. Position 77 to 10, and its record went up to 8 and 7. But Dan Fouts and the Chargers were 9 yards to tie the all-time San Diego record. Line, second down and four. Bounce, three out of six, 25 yards. Hard to believe that's all they've got through the air today. He puts more balls in the air than he's done today, I guarantee you. Jefferson in motion, play action. He's going for Jefferson. He's got him, and he makes the catch for the touchdown. John Jefferson, well, you can saw that was coming, I guess, Mike. 45-yard touchdown pass, and the Chargers are back in the lead. John Jefferson showed that great speed of the rookie. Beat Tim Collier. His sixth touchdown pass of the season. This young rookie has got it all. It's a play-action fake, and it's just speed right here. Collier was beaten by a good five yards. Now watch the wave to the fans. Thank you, sir and ladies and everyone. Great throw by Fouts. Fouts, 47th career touchdown pass. Vanerska to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Mike Fuller. It's on the way, and it is good. 5.09 remaining in the third quarter. And the Chargers have bounced out into the lead after the big pass play. They lead 20 to 13. Mr. Jefferson gets a little rest. A little congratulations from all of his teammates, too. Fine route, great speed, good concentration. Amazing for a rookie. Dan Fouts and John Jefferson combining for a big play here. San Diego. The first downs are even, 22 apiece. The score is 23 all. It's going to be first and 10 at the 28. 
You know, Lionel Mitchell still hasn't caught a pass. If they put one up, they got to give it to him. They have not thrown to Mitchell, who had caught 38 coming into today. Bounce. Just to get it away, and it's complete. John Jefferson again. Covered by Gary Barber. He'll do. Call a timeout and kick it. They'll run it right down to five seconds, somewhere around there. Fifteen seconds on the clock. Oh, he's going to run one more play. Ten seconds. Eight seconds. Four seconds. He better hurry. He throws, and it is a touchdown! With no time left, game! Touchdown to John Jefferson, and they were out of time. They could not have had time to kick the field goal. Unbelievable! Well, I'm sure there'll be some. In fact, I'm looking at Don Coriel, and he's saying, what in the world were we doing? But they get the touchdown and win this overtime game. J. Randolph, very strange. What a win. Here it is again. There was no way to kick the field goal if this pass was not completed. The time was out as the ball was in the air. Jefferson falling down. Touchdown and a win. Coriel is still trying to figure out why in the world they did this. And I'm sure there'll be some soul searching by Coriel from Fouch and Company. John Jefferson, their burner. They, they're going to have to stop him first. Stop the pass first and the run second. All right, so let's see what transpires as Ray Worsing gets set to kick off for the 49ers in their red or dark uniforms. The Chargers receiving the kick. Artie Owens and Hank Bauer are back and we're underway in San Diego and the kick will be taken about the one yard line by Artie Owens. Owens to the 25, 30-yard line, and he's still going, and he's finally brought down at the 40. A fine return by Artie Owens. Paul Hofer made the tackle. A 40-yard kickoff return, and the Chargers are charged up. The San Diego backfield, a poise, and getting better every week, you'd have to say, for Dan Fouts. Rated third in the conference in passing. Clarence Williams, who leads the NFL in touchdowns, and Mike Thomas, who George Allen knows so well from his Washington days. John Jefferson, the man they have to stop. Kellen Winslow, number 80, starting at tight end in place of the injured Klein. 74 at tackles. They have not had much of a pass rush. Inexperienced linebackers, but Willie Harper, number 59, has been outstanding. Second and 11 with a loss of a yard. The ball at the 49-yard line of San Francisco. Opening minutes here in San Diego. Now coming in motion comes Winslow towards you. Bouts. Has some time, and the pass almost picked up, completed to Jefferson, and he's out of bounds inside the 30, as the 49ers almost picked that one off. A dangerous pass indeed by Fouts, but maybe, George, you can tell if that's the fact. Well, Cornelius went for the interception. Misjudged it. Now watch this. Fouts threw it over him. We feel that... Uh, the Chargers are going to go to work on the left corner. They're going to go to work on the 49ers' left corner. So Jefferson gets the ball. First and 10, 20-yard pickup inside the 30-yard line. Fouts with time, double pumps, and he completes the pass at the 25-yard line. Well, in this opening drive, the one thing that is evident is that Fouts has plenty of time to throw the ball. Now, Jefferson again, George. Here's Jefferson. you got to stop him first. He gets open, he's smooth. You see all that time he has to maneuver? There's no defense. Gerard Williams made a good play on him. By the way, I think the 49ers got a fine defensive back in Gerard Williams. He's going to help their ball club. Uh, Ruben Vaughn, I think Gerard Williams is going to help him. I've always liked Hart, uh, Hardman. I uh, tried to make a trade for him when I was in Washington. Second and 14 at the 31. Al Cowling, who was activated number 79, is Wayne Board, 76. In for pass rushing. The pass. And Jefferson can't hold on to it. Tossed up the middle. And defending on the play was number 55, Scott Hilton. So, George, they're going to Jefferson. Yes, well, they're going to have to stop Jefferson first, like we talked at the top of the show. And then, and then go from there. He's open on that. 
jumped for the ball, and as he jumped for it, he dropped it. So Hartman's out of the game now, and number 54, Bob Martin, the linebacker, who was just activated a couple of weeks ago when he was acquired from New York in there. So it's third and 15 at the 31-yard line. Here comes the rush, and Faust pass to Jefferson is complete at the 45, and they rule it. A completed pass and the whistle blew. They rule it a completed pass, the whistle blew. Jefferson wow. catches the pass at the 47 yard line. Well, so they'll pull it back and John is down and uh, maybe shaken up a bit. Here's what the 49ers did. They went, went 34 again, three man rush. Jefferson's a guy he has to stop. They had him double covered but was inside out. He threw a strike in there. It's a good, good call by the official. All right, so Jefferson is still down, and that could hurt the Chargers. Still no score here in San Diego. Cornelius and Melvin Morgan. Well, they're throwing on Cornelius, you see. Yeah. I mentioned that, that's their game plan. See, I'm glad we brought the Jefferson thing out, though. Yeah. All right, let's... Uh, let okay, we'll write it out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Fine. So don't rush him, all right? Play him slow. Yeah. Well, Jefferson comes off the field. He appears to be all right, and here's what happens. He was sandwiched. Two defenders well, there. They got him covered inside out, but as he jumped, he was hit hard inside, outside. The ball came loose. The official blew it dead. I think he just got the wind knocked out of him. Charlie Joyner is wide to the right. Jefferson has caught... Four passes so far for 53 yards. First, I would think Fox is going to go into the end zone right now. Jefferson going into the dressing room early now. First, their job this year. The man who has made the offense of San Diego go, Bill Walsh, the head coach of the 49ers, says that Dan Fouts is the best leader in all of pro football. Completing 64% of his passes. Right in offense, obviously, the Chargers feel they can do the same thing. There's a great wide receiver, J.J., number 83. In motion now to the right. Thomas, 22, Williams, 40. Have any idea who Louie Wright considers the top three receivers in the National Football League, Bob? And I'll give you a clue. You're not among them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I think he considers Haven Moses one of them. Nope. Number one is Lynn Swan. Number two, Nat Moore of Miami. Number three, John Jefferson of San Diego. Well, he's going to see plenty of him today. Third. It's not a very good answer, but he thinks that the altitude has an effect on his players, and when he runs them in and out, it keeps them fresher. I don't agree whatsoever. If San Diego's playing with the same guys, why can't Denver? They practice it. I, I would think you, you'd lose the continuity of your defense. I agree totally. Bouts throws it down here for J.J. Oh. oh, just off his fingertips. And I believe even if he had caught it, he would have been out of the field of play. But a great effort by Jefferson. This young man in his second year last year, 56 catches, 1,001 yards, probably the most 13 touchdowns, probably the most acrobatic receiver in professional football today. Great speed, long strides. And it's tough to concentrate on a football when you're running full blast. You've got to keep your head still. Look how still his head is. And he just... He's trying to stay inbounds and catch the ball, too, and it's just impossible to do. And let me tell you, when Louis Wright was quoted as saying that Jefferson is the third best receiver in the league, he knew what he was talking about. Chargers are staying with their offensive game plan. You can't panic yet. No word yet on Kellen Winslow and his shoulder injury either. Well, this team has played very, very well under Don Coryell. They won eight and lost four to finish off the 1978 season, including seven of their last eight, and they're four and one this year. Over the middle, he's got Jefferson, a brilliant catch in front of Louis Wright. What an outstanding catch by John Jefferson right on the 50-yard line. And that is another San Diego first down, and Fouts has him moving again. From in tight, he's got Louis Wright single coverage, and most teams avoid Louis Wright like the plague. San Diego's not afraid of it. Fine catch, good concentration on the football. 
and Dan Fouts threw that right on the money. That is not an easy throw to get in there. Passes, likewise Terry Bradshaw. And Seattle leads San Fran 21-7. Baltimore 10-6 over the Jets. Baltimore looking for his first victory. The screen to Jefferson. Down he goes. Oh. Not a bad play by Louis Wright. Also, Tom Jackson wasn't fooled a bit, saw the offensive lineman pulling out in front of him, and we got a flag, and I think it's a clip on somebody out there. Jefferson faking downfield. Watch Jackson come into the picture, number 57, on your left-hand side. That's Russ Washington, I think they're going to call him for a clip. Great play by Tom Jackson. It was more Jackson than Louie Wright, and I gave Louie all the credit. A clip. I think it's against Russ Washington. Dan Fouts is 21 for 32 and 244 yards, and I can't understand why they're going to the fancy stuff down here. Here's the call. Clipping by number 70 on the offense. It has first not down. been a good day for Russ Washington. Two holding penalties, one clip. He has accounted for 35 yards in penalties himself. 12-year veteran out of Missouri. Denver now back at the or San Diego back at the Denver 32-yard line. Look at the stats on Fouts. You'd think he'd have four touchdowns on the board, but he has no points. All day, throws it in there, and it's complete at the 25-yard line. Bob Swenson making the stop on John Jefferson, and he got back some of the yardage, but certainly not enough on a second down play. And I'm not sure how he got that in there. John Jefferson was in amongst five or six Denver Broncos, Randy Gratishar was right behind him, and because of that cast on his hand, he couldn't stick his hand up to try to catch it. Watch this. Jefferson coming from the right. They're all over him. Great catch. Great concentration on the football. That was Rizzo that couldn't get his hand on the football. Well, they got back half of it. That's what they wanted to do. Norris Weiss with coming into this game. He had 17 catches, two touchdowns. Biggest play of the game for San Diego. And the pass about six inches too tall from Danny Fouts. That's the point, Sam. Coverage by Louis Wright on John Jefferson. And every time Denver's been in a crucial situation, they have put Louis Wright on John Jefferson to try to neutralize him. And Louis Wright has done an excellent job. And I do think if Dan Fouts had thrown a tight spiral on that, J.J. might have caught it. Jarella will attempt his fourth field goal of the day. The hold by Fuller at the 20. You may be right. Here's a big play for Fouts. Third down and 10 at his 11-yard line. Jefferson, Jefferson. He's got him at the 30-yard line. Oh, that kid's sensational. An outstanding catch by Jefferson, but remember what we said about Danny Fouts. Quoting Bill Walsh, the head coach of the 49ers, Fouts is the best leader in the NFL. How's that from leadership from the 11-yard line? And this guy is only in his second year of professional football, Sam. He's a clutch receiver. Fouts is very comfortable going to him in a very tight situation, and he makes the catch first and 10 on Denver's 30. Joiner wide left. Jeff. So it was either a, you got to come off to a different kind of route, man. You can't let a guy come you in had it like right. that. He could not change his set. Well, they had no one to pick up. Sometimes that happens. You know, you've got an offensive set where you literally cannot change it, and if you know which one that is, that's, of course, when you want to try to blitz. Second and 10. 157 remaining in the half. Bob Klein in motion. Wide open is Jefferson. Back to Hill. Oh, oh, oh. Look out of it. Could be seven. Yeah. Seven. He got it. Seven. Oh, he got in there. Oh, we got a football game now. I was about to say the key to this game thus far was the time San Diego on a first down inside the 20, Frank, and then Fouts do the intercept to Hayes. But let's see here. Super blocked by Charlie Joyner, helping Jefferson get into the end zone. Pick it up, Dean. Well, Frank, I was trying to see again. It seemed like all of a sudden one guy's getting really wide open. The ball was a little bit underthrown. It may have helped him score because when he came back, the Oakland defense came across. Tatum was just a little bit late getting over there. Jefferson's got the speed. That was his sixth touchdown of the year. Mike Wood for the conversion. 
Fuller is holding. Oh, oh. oh, oh that's smart. Burn out a lot. That hurts. But this helped. All right, a little quick push off right on the outside. That's Henry Williams coming up there. And nobody really came over. Now, probably you're trying to get those outside guys covered in a, a two-minute situation. Good and block just by left Joyner. Up there. Joyner did come back. He Good block by ago. Joyner. I believe it was Phil Yaw who got a big paw up there as we look at John Jefferson, his sixth touchdown of the year is Mitchell. No shot. And on fourth and five, San Diego down 24 to 9. We'll go for it. Open, showing a blitz move. Fox hangs it up. He got it, but a sensational catch over there by John Jefferson. Oh man, I thought I thought that was. Uh... He gets the first down, and he did it in an acrobatic fashion. Yeah, that is really a unique offensive weapon you're working with there, because, I, uh, again, that's not bad coverage. That is Mike Davis in good position. As you said, Don, it's just a tremendous catch by the second-year man out of Arizona yeah. State. It's also a coach who lives by offense, Don Coyell. Dan Fouts of San Diego highlighted his graceful gazelles to mount a comeback. Fouts and John Jefferson, number 83, combined to reduce the New England lead to six. It was a great season for Jefferson, but if 1979 belonged to one man, seasons, he scored 10 touchdowns and averaged 18 yards. just two pro seasons, John Jefferson has shown physical ability and tactical knowledge that continues to dazzle even those who see him every day. Among his biggest boosters is quarterback Dan Powers. The traits of John Jefferson are many. First of all, he's got all the world of ability that you could ever ask in a receiver. Secondly, he's tremendously coachable. He uh, takes great pride in running patterns at precisely the way they're designed. And he's got tremendous discipline on, in studying uh, his opponent each week. He's got tremendous desire. He's got great hands, all the physical attributes he needs. In 1979, Jefferson became only the third man in NFL history to catch passes for 1,000 yards in his first two seasons. He scored 10 touchdowns and averaged 18 yards every time he touched the ball. When J.J. catches a pass, the spectator knows he's witnessing a very special moment. It was a great season for Jefferson, but if 1979 belonged to one man... It... Second and seven for Dan Fouts. Bob Klein, the tight end in motion. Good protection, a flag down, complete to Jefferson, 20, and he fumbles at the 17-yard line, and I believe recovered his own fumble. Fouts ties John Hadle's completion mark, set back in 71. Now he goes for the mark himself, and looking for six... San Diego Chargers, they throw the ball, throw the football as well as anyone in football. Three ingredients to this pass. Good protection, good, good pass, solid pass right there. And Jefferson just broke into the clear. Looks like he beat JT Thomas. He's all by himself. Blood also came on that play. Second and ten for Fouts. Open is Jefferson. Complete at the 35-yard line. Tackle immediately by Donnie Shell. And again, despite the stunt by the Steelers, 
The blockers in front of Fouts did an excellent job of protecting him. Of about a half a yard, second down and ten. Open is Jefferson. in his progress as a wide receiver. Second and 20 from the Steeler 39. Good protection. Crouch down the side to Jefferson. Out of the six. How did that one get over J.T. Thomas? Isolated here. Let's watch him work. You see the bump right there. Now Blunt going down. The, I think he was frozen by that long action. Jumped up and misjudged the football. And Jefferson took it down. <laughs> Buffs guns and he has a man open. It's going to go all the way for a touchdown. John Jefferson. One of the things that Coriel says about Fouts is that he does not have the great long arm. But he sure put that one right on the money. And Jefferson was there to just grab that football and carry it into the end. Take a quick look at Jefferson and watch the move that broke him loose. Just a little simple fake right there and then driving to the post. 49 Perry, obviously not able to keep up with him. And Brown, Eddie Brown, the extra back put in there specifically to keep that. Day and he's going to be hanging out around on Bob Klein most of the time out there on the football field. Third down, 15. Fouts wide open. And it looks as if a first down to 83, John Jefferson at the Houston 26-yard line. <laughs> Certainly one of the most exciting connections in football. Bouts number 14 to Jefferson. Now watch him zip this pass. He just fired that football. Goes right in between the defenders. Jefferson clamps it quickly. Got to wonder if his ribs don't hurt a little bit after that one. He is nursing short, short ribs. There the isolation on number 83, Jefferson. Just too quick to handle one-on-one. -on -one. Later today in San Diego, and he's had something to be pumped up about. Now Fouts. He guns it for Jefferson, and he's down at the 47-yard line. Jefferson open again. San Diego uses its final timeout, stopping the clock with three seconds. Three contribution to help our American Olympic athletes, U.S. Olympics, Post Office Box 1980K, Cathedral Station, Boston, Massachusetts, 02118. Those were not the signals given by the San Diego assistant coach. He was doing something else. That's Jim Hannafin giving the signal. A man receiving the kick signals, of course, Dan Fouts. Out on the field, he'll look to the sideline and immediately after he gets that pass off. This to the ground. Third down, 17 for San Diego. Good protection. There's John Jefferson. First down at the 49-yard line of San Diego. A big play for the Chargers. They needed 17, got 19. A very emotional response from the San Diego Charger fans. That's the kind of football they came to see. And whatever it was that Jim Hannafin called, it certainly was successful. About looking away, all the way to the end of that pass, gets the ball on target to John Jefferson. Jefferson doing exactly what he has to do, get deep, drive the defender off, cut inside, and catch the football. San Diego now... Bouts, who passed six times for over 300 yards during the regular year, has 325 today, but that's an empty statistic with 29 seconds left. Jefferson, complete at the 41 of San Diego. The clock is running. 20, 19, 18. They have to hurry. San Diego's 34 to 14 win. It was another Sunday when the quarterback reigned as king. When you think about the San Diego Chargers, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is their offense. That's what took them to the playoffs last year. Overlook is the defense, and they have an awesome defensive line. They will use all seven men. That shows that they have great depth, Charlie. They will employ a four-man defensive line, and they really put pressure on the quarterback. Right now, they're tied for first with most quarterback sacks. They have 16. The San Diego offense, well, it starts with the main man, Dan Fowler. 
Number 14 Fouts is a man that makes them go. He has a great deal of confidence in his ability and the abilities of his teammates. He'll put that ball up in the air regardless of what down it is or where he is on the field. And also, the San Diego Chargers have a new team member this week. They acquired him in a trade from New Orleans, Chuck Muncie. They hope Muncie will be the key to get them to the Super Bowl. He may play today. In particular, he may run back the kickoffs. So we've got a great one. Two undefeated teams, San Diego and Buffalo. Buffalo. NFL 80 will continue from San Diego in just a moment. Hello, everybody. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson, the two undefeated teams of the National Football League as Dick Mickemeyer of the Buffalo Bills kicks off. It is taken at the one-yard line by the San Diego Chargers. On the return... The Chargers will set up shop just outside their 21-yard line, a 20-yard return by Booker Russell. And so the San Diego offense goes to work with Dan Fouts, John Capaletti, and Clarence Williams in the backfield. The receiver is Charlie Joyner, the tight end is Greg McCrary, and J.J. John Jefferson. That offensive line, Shields, Wilkerson, Masick, White, and Washington. So San Diego, first down from their own 21-yard line. goes right to the air. The quick screen, far side. Pass is complete, but it will lose two, maybe three yards on the play. John Jefferson, the flanker, is the man who made the reception. 44-yard line of Buffalo. First down. Bounce fakes. He will go deep. Over the middle, and it's pulled down by John Jefferson. They'll mark it at the 22-yard line. A gain of 22. Jeff Nixon makes the tackle. First down, San Diego, as they have their first threat of the ball game. He was looking deep to Charlie Joyner. Joyner was well covered. This is his secondary receiver, and watch his great catch. That is great concentration. See Jefferson following that ball all the way into his hands. Bounce back. He was looking for Joyner initially, as you can see, but just a great catch by Jefferson. First down, Buffalo 22. Jefferson pulls this one down at the 10-yard line. Gain of 12 and another first down. Mario Clark is the man that he beat on the Buffalo Bill defense. And listen to the crowd here at San Diego Stadium. I had said earlier that Fox would put that ball up in the air regardless of what the situation was, where he is on the field, in any situation. See right now they've decided they're going to put that ball up in the air. They tried to run the ball a few times. They didn't have much success. They were, they were stopped on the third and short situation. Watch this, Charlie Joyner, quarter. San Diego had the ball in offense. Almost three minutes more than Buffalo, and they ran 74 plays. Turnovers are even, one on each side. Third down goal to go for the five. Back set, loops it, corner the end, corner it there. Touchdown, San Diego. John Jefferson with his fifth touchdown reception of the season. Dan Fouts, his second of the ball game, his 12th touchdown pass. Fouts really threads the needle on this one because there was not much room. He had a man going out in the flat. His joiner, and he throws it over the linebackers. Number 29 is Clark. The defensive back throws it over right into the arms of Jefferson. Excellent throw. 29 yards on the drive in seven plays. Here's the extra point attempt by Rock Benerska. And it is good. It is San Diego 14 and Buffalo 3. We are four seconds into the second quarter. We'll be back. Something had to give last Sunday in Philadelphia when two winning streaks collided. It was the fourth lowest scoring game of the year in the National Football League, and the Eagles tied their all-time record for sacking the quarterback. The amazing Claude Humphrey, the veteran, was in on some of those sacks, three of them. It was maybe the best defensive game the Eagles have played this year, and they'll need that rush in the quarterback against the aerial-minded San Diego Chargers, who are trying to get more of a running game with big Chuck Muncie. Since he came over here from New Orleans, he's averaged nearly 80 yards a game running in a San Diego uniform. Just a perfect day for football. From the San Diego Stadium, it's the NFL on CBS today. The winningest team in the NFL, the Eagles, against the homestanding San Diego Chargers. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Kurt Gowdy with Hank Stram. Dick Vermeil said the effort by the Eagles last uh, week was the best any defense of his has ever played, and he said, that's my kind of football. He is a tough leader, conducts the longest practices in the National Football League, but he has the players respecting him and caring for him. They really have a, a, a disciplined club, Clank. Yeah, he leads with a velvet hammer kind of a discipline, and it's very effective, and he's done a great job, which is very obvious. San Diego, on the other hand, uh, Curtis, a very outstanding football team. A lot of talent. They come after you with a lot of different things. One of the keys to the game is Kellen Winslow, who has come into the game with 66 catches. He comes at you from a variety of places. I talked to him before the game, and this is what he had to say. What makes the defenses uh, have to work a little bit harder during the week, they don't know where I'm going to be at. They have to, you know, get ready for Kellen Winslow here, Kellen Winslow there, Kellen Winslow there. Cause we do different things from different spots when I move around. So it makes them work a little harder, a little pressure on them. Number one, Tony Franklin. The Eagles will kick off. The San Diego Chargers will receive. That's Tony Franklin. They've been concerned about his kickoffs. He's been kicking to about the 10-yard line. And the Chargers are spreading out. And notice the Charger kick return men are on the 10-yard line. So they've uh, been doing their scouting. In the middle for the Chargers is number 84, Ron Smith. Hank Bauer on the far side. Mike Fuller on the near side. No breeze at all. The wind is in no factors to start the game. And here's the kick. And this one is coming right at the 12. Smith up to the 20, 25. Finds an opening. Gets to the 32. And he's dropped down there at the 32-yard line. Well, let's set the charges up now offensively for you. That's the offensive line. And it's a good one. They block well for Fouts. There are the receivers, the best in football. Three of them lead their conference in the number of catches and the number of yards with the running backs. Mike Thomas starting in place of Clarence Williams. Watch Winslow. He likes to move in motion. He'll do it a lot. Maybe he won't on this very first play, but they throw the ball. And they're going to throw the bomb to Jefferson. He's there. He's got it. A pump fake. A pump fake by Fouts. Jefferson faked a, a button hook and then had his man slowed down on a change of pace and blew right by him. They go right after, the, right after the rookie on the very first play of the game. He pumps and sends him deep. Roy Nell Young, the defensive corner, they lick him by a large margin. Jefferson makes the catch over the shoulder and they start the game with a bang with a forward pass. The play went for 52 yards. Jefferson now has over a thousand yards in receiving this year. 13 to 10, Tampa Bay over the uh, Green Bay Packers in the fourth period. And the Colts lead the Bills 21-17 in the third. Watch somebody come in motion to the right. Here he comes. Second this is Jefferson. Eight. There it is. Jefferson hooked and goes down on the 12. Roy now Young. Is on top of him. Roy Nell Young is an excellent young defensive back, but he's really going to get a good workout here this afternoon because of the variety of things they're going to throw at him. This time they throw in front, one-on-one -on -one with Jefferson. You see Roy Nell Young coming into the picture, but it's way too late. And another first down for the San Diego Chargers. Dan Faust has hit seven out of seven. One touchdown, 122 yards. Field goal. But since then, they have been stopped by the Eagle defense. They've got to run the ball better. They've got to try to incorporate more balance. Fouts throws it out. Jefferson has it. Maybe short of the first down. He's very close to it. He was hit by Herman Edwards, and Fouts made a great throw to get it to him that time. Yes, he did, and it's very close. He throws it outside. Watch Humphrey. And then 78, Harrison putting pressure. Edwards makes a hit with his shoulder pads, very close to the first down. Hank, I remember Frank Cush telling me when he coached Jefferson at Arizona State that Jefferson had the best concentration of any athlete he'd ever coached. Well, evidently he has because he's a fantastic receiver. Get that out of there. No signal as to uh, stop the clock here. 
Maybe the Eagles call the time. That's third down. Third down. We had no official signal on that. Muncie playing today, uh, for those that joined us late, with a viral infection in his throat. His throat swollen. Mike Thomas now has gone in. Here's Mike Thomas, formerly of the Redskins. Got some contract problems there. The Chargers picked him up. Third down. And 17 to go for the Chargers. A lengthy last 30 seconds of the first half with the Chargers ahead, 16 to nothing. On two Dan Fout touchdown passes to Kellen Winslow and a field goal by Bernaschke. Chargers, by the way, missed their extra point on their first touchdown. Sometimes that always comes back to haunt you. You, know, you have to always be concerned about missing an extra point in a field goal attempt when you have an opportunity to make them. Third down. Here's Big Ben. Three men going down. He's going to fire it down the sideline. He gets it to Jefferson. He's out of bounds. Boom. Right there on the 27-yard line. Five seconds to play in the half. That's a good formation. They had all three wide receivers, including Winslow, on the left side and then broke Jefferson to the side. He made the catch and wisely jumped out of bounds. Now they have a field goal attempt, but very good execution on the play. Well, Bernarski. And now, officially, this is, you know, he can wind up with less than 300, but Dan Fouts now has 302 yards passing. It'll be the sixth game this season for 300 or more yards. It's an all-time NFL record in one season. He had five last year. Namath had five in one year. Fox now has six. There may be more for him. Look at that catch by Jefferson. What a receiver. They've seen two of the best of all time here. This is a youngster yet. Lance Allworth and now J.J. Jefferson. You, you can't have better coverage than Roanell Young had on Jefferson that time. He just outleaped him and made the catch. The ball was thrown perfectly. There it goes, over the top. Watch their young defensive back. You can't ask him to do a better job than that. He just made a beautiful catch and pressure. Man, it's so good. I asked Sid Gilman, who's the best? He said, uh, you, you can't tell yet. He said, nobody was better than all of Jefferson can be as good. Perfectly, perfectly. Didn't have any pass rush, and he picks up the first down. Winslow needs four more catches this year to tie Mike Ditka for the most catches of the one season by a tight end. There he goes in motion to the right. First down from their 40. The Chargers put the ball out to Jefferson. He has it. Jefferson's out of bounds for the first down on the Eagle 41. Funny how the Chargers can go along, look like nothing, and suddenly they put that aerial game to work. Well, they have a lot of finish in their passing, which is very obvious, and they don't care where they are, what the score is, they keep pumping it up. Throw it right on target. Beautiful shot there. With Jefferson making the catch on the outside. Fouts hard to get to because he drops back just seven yards. And there you see him on Ronell Young going in front and to the outside. Fouts now 15 out of 21, 271 yards. I don't get much on that play. You know, the surprising thing about this Charger team, Kurt, is the fact they've got such a big, strong offensive line, and it's hard to understand why they really don't run better than they do. They try to, but they just don't run nearly as efficiently as they do as they throw the ball. That was Clarence Williams, number 40, who carried the ball on that last occasion. Muncie hasn't played much today with a virus. The figure Fouts is going for now is 300 passing yards in this game, and he'll hold an all-time NFL record in one season. Out they spread, wide open, Jefferson. That puts the ball on the 17-yard line. A first down, and Jefferson is on the ground. They're in zone, they're in zone coverage, Winslow went in motion. And in spite of the double on the outside, he was open down the sideline. The deep back, number 22, did not cover. Bernard Wilson did not get over quick enough, and for that reason, they were able to make the reception. 
It's Wilson who's down. And we'll be back with a score 19 to 7, San Diego. This passing shirt is the San Diego splattering. And you're supposed to have the answer, so yeah. I'll, st I'll start off with what? I wish I had the answer. A lot of folks are want to know about Tony Dorothy. He hasn't worked out this year. Do you think he'll play? Are you going to start him? Well, he said he felt pretty good. We're not going to start him. Ron Springs will start. He's got a little soreness left, which is... I don't know whether I'm going to play him or not, Don. I'm going to have to wait and see. Okay. Uh, the Coryell teams of the past have all been high scoring. Uh, you shifted to defense this year. You Actually, you played some good defensive games. Have you done anything different to try to flag all these guys down? Well, we, we, sure, we've tried to do not a few things. Me, huh? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, give, me a, tell give you. me a clue. What are you going to do? It's tough, I tell you. you have to, blitz you can't make any mistakes, Don. That's the main thing. If you make mistakes, you're going to get sung. And if we don't make too many mistakes, we might play pretty good defense. All right, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Let's go back, Frank. We'll get this thing going. Thank you a lot. All right, Frank. Take it away. All right, Don. He wouldn't tell you anything for nine years. He wouldn't tell you anything tonight. We really, quite frankly, blame him. Tom Landry, of course, worried about the San Diego Chargers. He's worried about the Philadelphia Eagles, the Eagles winners today over the Chicago Bears. As we mentioned at the top of the show, these Dallas Cowboys must win tonight to stay one game behind the Philadelphia Eagles. Meanwhile, the San Diego Chargers, well, they beat the Giants a week ago, but two weeks ago they were thrashed by the Oakland Raiders, and the Oakland Raiders, well, they'd move into a tie should the Chargers lose tonight. San Diego with a victory could remain a game ahead and we are looking for an aerial carnival tonight. The receiving unit, as we can see, the Chargers dropping into position. Here is a much-traveled man, Chuck Muncie, a much-discussed man. He joined the San Diego Chargers a couple of weeks ago in a trade that was reported to have required only a number two draft pick. So there has to be some question as to why the New Orleans Saints released Muncie. There were many questions surrounding this man, but we do know that when he's right, he's playing, he's a great athlete. Set to kick off, Raphael Septian. The two deep men are Muncie 46 and Mike Fuller 42 and from Texas Stadium with 65,000 looking on, we're underway. Muncie will bring him out of the end zone. Muncie, 6'3", 233 pounds, roars out to the 42-yard line. Dexter Klinkscale made the stop for Dallas. Let's meet the offensive unit. Dan Fouts, he just comes out throwing. He sets up the run with the pass. And the setbacks, we will see Muncie starting tonight in place of Clarence Williams. His first start in the offensive set. The wide receivers, they are something special. Both of them. The wide receivers over 100 yards a week ago against the Giants. Their tight end, Kellen Winslow, also had 100 yards against the Giants. On first down, bounce to the air. We didn't think anything else. It's complete into Dallas Cowboy territory at the 49-yard line to John Jefferson. That's his 39th reception on the year. Dan Faust looking over to pick up the plays that are called down by Joe Gibbs, the offensive coordinator. They are now flashed out to Faust as we look at the defensive unit. A defensive unit that, quite frankly, was in a transition state early in the year. They have come together. They have 13 interceptions back there. Tom Landry devoting much of his training camp time to set up the pass. There's no fear in this team. This is an angry man, Dan Fouts, and he is also an exceptional quarterback. You mentioned Charlie Waters because the others are so young, they call them Charlie's Angels. Second down, 10. Fouts looking it over. Puts his backs into the pattern. Going out for Jefferson, and Jefferson in front of Aaron Mitchell. First down, San Diego, down inside the 30, close to the 28-yard line. There is simply no way to cover John Jefferson one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody, but nobody in the league can do it. I think, too, you got a, an indication of what Muncie can mean to this team when he returned the opening kickoff the way he did. Coyell is delighted with him. He has not been a bad actor at all. Been six. You know, he probably said, whoops. Whoops is not a good word. I don't care. You know, you think of that. Whoops. You know, whoops. Best thing you do is grab him. First and ten. Now at the 30. Following the holding call, Williams in motion. Bounce to the air. Bounce laying it up and... I'll tell you, we have seen Jefferson catch those kind of footballs. He is a tremendous leaper at 6'1 and 198, but that one's slightly overthrown. It'll be second and 10. He laid that up beautifully. He had another man he could have thrown to, Charlie Joyner, number 18, who was even further down here. This is a tough team to defense. It, it, 
Elliott. Aaron Mitchell was out to the outside. I think maybe it's a pretty good defensive play by Mitchell. When he saw the ball in the air, he fell off of his receiver, came back in. He was actually closer to the receiver. That was a strong safe. Fouts on second and ten. Dan Fouts. He set an NFL yardage record last year of 4,082 yards. Looking over the Dallas defense, inside handoff, Clarence Williams. He battles forward for about three yards. It'll be third down and seven. The ball out at the 33-yard line. Fouts also has passed 14 times for 300 or more yards. He did it six times a year ago. He lost three of the games, I might add. Of course, Landry is very familiar with Goyell. What a rivalry they had when Goyell was coaching at St. Louis. Landry holds a 6-4 edge, but they've split the last eight games. Mike Thomas, former Washington Redskin, activated a week ago, where it's 22 for the Chargers. Good receiver. He's in there on third and seven. Fouts fires a timing pass to John Jefferson. He'll be... Close to a first down. I think he, that was just right on the money. Now, that's another thing we've talked about a lot is how the receiver must know what that distance requirement is. And you saw Jefferson make just the right cut. The ball was really was thrown with good timing, wasn't it? And he picks up the fourth, fourth, the first down at the 41-yard line. John Jefferson, 2,000-yard seasons. Only two other players in the history of pro football have done that. You helped Bob Hayes do it, Don. And, of course, Bill Groman with the... Houston Oilers did it in 1661. If he gets 1,000 yards this year, he'll be the only man ever to do it. Ever made. He has a way of finding the open spaces, and he has a way of responding to injury. Oh, did we see that last year? Exactly. On first and ten for the Chargers. Bounce as the troops moving. Jefferson. What a throw. And I'll tell you, he looked off of Charlie Joyner and saw out of the corner of his eye, Jefferson pops him for a first down, and this is one great passing quarterback. That's one of the toughest ones to throw to. You're talking about a 20-yard sideline, and you're right, his little play-action pass in the middle, Frank. He sent the two guys down deep on a deep sideline. Look at the ball, not a ripple in it. Just right on the money. Good catch by Jefferson. Well, you have to have power in the arm to throw that oh. kind of ball with youth and at the same time sustain their continuing excellence of all the recent years. That's organization. Capaletti in motion on first and ten. Bouts to the air, man wide open, Jefferson. And Jefferson looks for the sideline, saw he had running room and moves out over the 35, close to the 37. Aaron Mitchell fouling up his coverage back there, defensively with Charlie Waters. And Charlie yeah. Waters, the veteran back there, now talking to them and trying to explain what went wrong. Well, you have to give instant credit to Fouts. He comes back unafraid after the last interception. Oh, yeah, he's not going to be afraid. That was really a rather ingenious pass pattern. <laughs> tell you, two weeks ago against Oakland, he was sacked seven times, came back again and again. He threw for 388 yards in a losing cause there. Even Strike, even you were called in your time. Not from the guard position. <laughs> First down, 15. Cowboys with the flip oh. on, and it found it out of the hands of Joyner, right into the arms of Jefferson. That is, oh, I'm afraid. Joyner was smashed. He's lying on the Wait. surface of the Texas Stadium. The ball bounced right into the hands of Jefferson. And Joyner was really hit. And you saw that first man there was Fouts. He is a quality kind of guy. I like Danny Fouts. And he knows this guy's hurt. He's going to go over there and check on him in a hurry. He really did take a lick. Joyner, I believe, is saying, I'm all right. But he was hit so hard, I don't think they're going to let him up until they check everything out. An extraordinary play, though. Look at it again, Don. Well, again. You know, we're talking these these two outside receivers with Joyner cutting across the middle. D. Lewis is holding in Muncie on the inside. He was just sprung up. That's Wilson coming in from the outside. And what a lick. Again, had to be in the right place at the right time. John Jefferson, hometown boy here. We talked about Jefferson earlier in his thousand request for his third thousand year. Joyner's all right, too. Wow. Boy, that's a tough cookie. Twelve years he's been doing that. Let's take a look at it again. And the concentration a wide receiver has to have. He didn't take his eyes off that ball for a second. He gets powdered right there by Wilson. But you better believe after all the years that Joyner has played, he knew he was going to get bombed. And still he tried to come up with the football. And the ball bounced off of Wilson's shoulder bat, it looked like. 
58-yard touchdown. Here's Benershka for the conversion as the Chargers move into the lead. San Diego moves back on top. They lead 10 to 7, and there's Charlie Joyner having another tremendous year after his best year ever a year ago. A moment ago, we had a shot of Jefferson and went 58 yards for the touchdown. Here is the man who took the shot from Steve Wilson. The ball deflected into the arms of Jefferson. All right, getting close to that two minute thing. Pretty close ratio between passing and rushing plays for the Chargers, but even more interesting. The Chargers have had only three offensive plays this entire quarter. Charlie Joyner, by the way, is back in the ballgame. Wide receiver now for the Chargers. Motion man, Mike Thomas. Bounce to put it in the air. Jefferson. Close to a first down out near the 47-yard line. Hit by Aaron Mitchell and... That's an understatement when you speak of Mitchell, the right cornerback, number 34, for the Cowboys. He will lay it on you. Frank, that's extraordinary that before that play, they had the ball for only three plays the whole quarter. He couldn't believe this ball came that directly to it. Notice this time they didn't waste time with the running play. Last time, they had the fumble on the second consecutive running play. Dallas quickly moves into their pass prevent defense. Bounce on third down and... Hangs it up for Jefferson. Yes, he catches the ball and goes out of bounds for a first down at the 35-yard line. Had Faust let him, it would have been six. Man, a life. Now, how the world did he get that was a, I didn't see him make I his move. I don't know. I don't know how he got that free. He ran a square out, and then he knew he was covered. Went out. And he turned it up, and Faust read it quickly, got, it, got the ball to him. Well, he got it right before Randy White hit him. And you're right, he's... He hurt himself on that play. Boy, that's some catch. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell nice. you, had the ball been well thrown, it was touchdown. Five to own 46. Out. Touchdown. First down. Beautiful pattern. And Fouts absolutely timed it out perfectly. Six. And Thomas and Muncy behind Dan Fouts. John Jefferson, Ron Johnson said no, but Ron Johnson hit Jefferson, forcing it out of bounds. He was in the arms of the defender. He did not have to come down. Down and 10, the ball in midfield. Bounce, frantically searching for a receiver. He finds Jefferson. And Jefferson, first down, 45 yard line. And Bounce was a magician on that. He looked everywhere until he had to whip it to Jefferson. He had Lambert and Ham both sitting there shaking their heads, saying, how in the world are we missing? He's pretty well covered. He's coming across the middle. Lambert slipped down a little bit. That's how he missed. I oh, mean, Ham up. slipped down. That was Lambert. Whoa, pretty good. Mark. For the Chargers, he carries the number 22. He's going to touch down. And there's the fake to him, and Fouts throws it out. And that is Jefferson on the far side. Look out there, he goes! Boy, those, those are the kind the quarterbacks love to have. Fouts threw a bad ball. Jefferson made a great play out of it. It was a fake to the offside. A little a quick screen pass to the right side. Got good penetration from the offensive lineman. Russ Washington went out there to help. Knocked the quarterback down, and Jefferson just ran it on in there. This guy would have been rookie of the year last year had there not been Earl Campbell around. Watch this play. A little fake to the offside. The backs really get the flow going. He comes off to Jefferson. Didn't really throw the ball well. Jefferson made an easy catch of it. Runs it in on the less than the Chargers take a 6 to nothing lead. 65-yard drive, and Rolf Wineski comes in to add the X. 9.34 to go. We're in the second quarter. And it's 14-3. Alex loops it and looking for Jefferson, and what a play! He goes down, and he is knocked down there by Lester Hayes, who has his hands full today. But I want to tell you, that is the second catch we've seen him make today of that leaping variety. Well, that's, that is a planned play. When you've got a man one-on-one -on -one with his back turned to the quarterback, all the quarterback has to do is get it high enough and let the receiver take care of the ball. Bouts gets it up in the air. Tarkington was a master at that. There are a lot of quarterbacks. When you have a receiver like this, I can remember in the old days I had a David Parks. If he gets one-on-one -on -one with somebody, put it up there and let him do the work. Jefferson will get it done for him. Jefferson got the job done there, and of course that Oakland defense, you almost know the numbers by heart now. They've been out there a long while. And here we are. As the Steelers lose at Three Rivers, that is an upset.
Philadelphia rallied from a 16-3 deficit to beat the Giants 31-16. Fouts for Jefferson. Might be intercepted. Oh, Jefferson with another incredible catch. Oh, my. A chance for you to watch this from ground level. You see the action as Fouts goes back. Fights it all the way. He's getting tremendous pressure. Stays in, stays in, and fires that ball long. It's slightly inside. Jefferson actually has to fight through Lester Hayes, number 37, to make that catch. Now watch the body control at the end of this pattern. The ball, as we said, inside. Lester Hayes has position. Jefferson shields him with his body and makes another incredible catch. That's why it leads all wide receivers in the NFL, both in catches and in yardage. First. The reality of the football player's life, he's okay, he's out for the year, but he is not in any pain at the moment. The throw is to Jefferson with another one of his incredible catches. Oh, they're going to have to create a new league. He, he's going to have to move to a higher league. Uh, how many men make those kind of plays week in, week out? I don't think uh, there are more than two, maybe three receivers in the league who make this catch. And Jefferson, it's the extension. Absolutely leaping out and catching it with the fingertips. A 28-yard gain. But again, the kind of play that how many guys are going to make it? Maybe two or three in the league. He caught the back end of the ball. But again, as you see when he starts to run the ball, he's not getting that much yardage. And now he's got second and long. And it's a passing situation for him. You'll see the defensive backs, extra defensive backs going in, and the four-man rush coming in. And this is the situation that they've hurt Fouts on. They've gotten a rush on him, and they've tracked it today. Hardman 86, Jones 90 in there. To Jefferson! Touchdown! Oh, my! John Jefferson is sixth touchdown of the year. Uh, you don't have to be a fan to appreciate this guy. He's a, he's an artist. And you're going to feel like you're covering Jefferson with this one. Foul. High in the air. Watch the ball now. Right over the top of Dwayne Osteen, 35. And caught again on the fingertips. The knees down in the end zone. What a classic play. The official stayed on top of that one. And he was going to make sure that Jefferson came up with the football. You saw him hold it up. That's when the hands went in the air. Six points. Wow. The Nershka kicks it through. And the Chargers waste no time at all. Just over two minutes after the Oakland touchdown to march quickly downfield. As Fouts using his talented outside receivers, Joyner and Jefferson, and hitting Jefferson for the touchdown. And with 5.27. Thomas in motion to the outside, Fouts retreats the throw, looks for J.J., throws to tight end, Winslow, Kellen Winslow, the big tight end. It's going to be marked up near the 40-yard line. It's the National Football League in yardage, passing. That's Winslow over and back, Fouts now. Pumps it up the middle, and J.J., Jefferson's got the ball at the 40-yard line of the Giants, first and 10. At the 39, that's Winslow in motion. Fouts, pumps to Winslow, Winslow at the 35, the 30. Runs like a halfback as he goes into the 24-yard line. Thomas in motion to the outside left. Fouts retreats. That's up. Throws a screen left to join him. The veteran receivers at the 24. And he is stopped right there. Fumbled as the ball got away and the scramble was on. And who got the football? Apparently the Giants got the football on the fumble. 58.7, 13 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. He pumps it and it's going to complete. The veteran receiver, Joyner, inside the 45-yard line. Jefferson and Joyner, double left to go right, tight end Winslow. Winslow inside the 25, on down to the 23-yard line. And now, Fouts pumps it to Winslow, and Winslow is stopped short of the goal line, but just barely. He had to be bulldogged by Mark Haynes. Fouts. Pumps it to Joyner. Joyner's at the 35. He's at the 40-yard line on a crush it. First down and 10 yards. Fouts back now. And it's complete to Joyner. Joyner's at the 40-yard line with the Giants. He is out of bounds. Barry Jackson ran him out. It's going to be spotted first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Line of the Giants. That's Winslow in motion. Tight end to the left side. Going all the way out. Fouts retreats. Look at the man in the middle. He's wide open. And J.J. is gone. J.J. for the touchdown. John Jefferson. 
Jefferson's seventh touchdown reception of the year. That's Mike Thomas in motion to the left. Capaletti, the lone setback, Fouch. Starts back, pumps it to the far side. Completed to Jefferson. Nickel in anticipation of Fouch putting it up. And that's pretty good anticipation. Fouch retreats. Pumps it over the middle, and it's complete, and it's Winslow, the tight end of the 30-25. That former All-American of Missouri stretches out those legs in the open field, and he moved first in Tennessee. To the right. There he is, Joyner, open. Isn't he the penalty marker? Penalty marker thrown. Joyner took it in, but there was a marker on the play. Here at San Diego Stadium. And Don Coriel, the head coach of the Chargers, heading into the locker room. He was anxious, he said, to get his team going against the Giants. They had dropped two in a row, and he wanted to get out of the habit. 21-0 at the half. Jordan Levy and a backup quarterback are sending in plays to the Chargers. Fouts completes it to Joyner out at the 40-yard line. Here in which San Diego sends in plays. The back. They use the indicator system like baseball. Look at all the room over this right side. Look at it now, would you? That's it. Joyner. Joyner took it to the two-yard line. Mike Dennis made the tackle first and goal. San Diego at the Giants' two. Side. Now it bumps it to Joyner, and it's complete. That'll be enough for the first down. Mike Dennis on the corner made the stop. First and ten, and set the 24-yard line. Good anticipation on any play. Winslow, the tight end, goes to the 44-yard line of the Giants at his first and ten. Bounce. And it's completed. Taken by J.J. And he is at the 31-yard line, and that is a first down. Third down play. Bounce back to throw. Pumps it. And completes it. He's got the first down. And it is near the 35-yard line. And it's at the 21-yard line, first and 10. That's for six yards or more. All three receivers will have over 100 yards for San Diego. Luther throws. Deflected and complete. Inside the 10-yard line. Looks like they're pivoting a little bit to the right side. There's Muncie, and it is touchdown, San Diego. Chuck Muncie. Good run. Good the New York Giants, seven, four minutes, 39 seconds left to play in this game. You can have a look at it. Has recovered by the New York Giants. There's a trap inside. From, they scrape the ball loose. And there's a recovery. Completes it. Hanging by Pittman, Danny Pittman. He marked at about the 28-yard line. Wow. With 145 left in the game. Incomplete, and the ball goes over. That was Bo Matthews. Yeah, Don Coriel is along the sideline. Dave Levy there beside him. They're going to let it run out. You see the time remaining in set. Five seconds, four seconds. Coriel heading for the exit. And so the San Diego Chargers have won the ball game by a final score over the Giants of 44 to 7. There is the final score. San Diego dominating play here this afternoon. A great day for Dan Fouts. Number 83, John Jefferson. The wide receiver from Arizona State was 78th number one draft pick and was blessed with a kind of body control and agility that no coach could teach. A Coriel, pro football's best way to fly. San Diego lived by the pass and their opponents knew it. So they tried to stop the Chargers aerial game by any means possible. Intimidation became a weekly enemy. The NFL offered another challenge. Heavy traffic over the middle. 
So J.J. strapped on his goggles and proved that he could hold his own in the danger zone. John Jefferson caught 56 passes and tied the all-time NFL record for touchdown catches by a rookie with 13. Back Dan Fouts and wide receiver John Jefferson teamed up for San Diego's initial touchdown. One-handed high-flying player has become commonplace and effective for number 83. Receiver John Jefferson. Few athletes in San Diego history have been more admired by the fans or acclaimed by his peers. In 1980, Jefferson became the first man ever to gain a thousand yards receiving in each of his first three seasons. He led the league in touchdown receptions and receiving yards. He was named All-Pro and he made catches that must be considered state-of-the-art. Jefferson not only made colorful catches, he made catches that counted. None was more memorable than the overtime game winner against the Oakland Raiders. He sends Jefferson and Joyner left. He's going for Jefferson. He's got it for the one yard line. Touchdown. He wants a touch. Lester Hayes didn't touch him. Jefferson rolls in for the victory. Charger power generates the most voltage in the passing game. For Coriel, any time is the right time to put the ball in flight. In San Diego, that means strap on the goggles, unleash pro football's most exciting offensive weapon, John Jefferson.
Justin Jefferson caught another impossible game winner.
finally, the San Diego Chargers vision of the Super Bowl came plummeting to earth. Their future was all Jews down. They could only watch those glowing hopes dwindle away as now the darkness closes over San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium. The Chargers were hit with turmoil over the trade of John Jefferson. John Jefferson returned to pro football as a Green Bay Packer. The arrival of superstar receiver John Jefferson. The man they called J.J. brought with him a sense of freshness and originality, as well as a unique... Before there was an Air Jordan in sports, there was a phenomenon known as Air Coriel. Our selection for the greatest receiving unit ever is the San Diego Chargers threesome of Charlie Joyner, John Jefferson, and Kellen Winslow. So, Kellen, a friend of mine told me that you felt like you were the best receiver the Chargers ever had, even when I was there. How can that be? What is the question? I mean, I was the best receiver while we was there. Okay, so I left early, but you while we were there, I had to be the best. Without me, John, down the middle, you never would have got the ball. You never would have seen that deep eight route. That slant route would have been eaten up because those linebackers would have jumped all over you. Without me in the middle, you were nothing. People never got the opportunity to re really see the real John Jefferson because you never stayed in the block. You always wanted to go out I for the pass. Blocking was not in my contract, okay? If they wanted me to block, they would have paid me twice twice as much as they did. Wait a minute, I remember when you came out of Missouri, I was the guy who taught you how to catch with one hand. <laughs> While there might be some debate as to who was the best individually, as a trio, John Jefferson, Kellen Winslow, and Charlie Joyner formed the greatest receiving unit that ever played in the NFL. Each player lent his own special skills to one of pro football's most explosive offensive attacks. Built by head coach Don Coriel and piloted by quarterback Dan Fouts, Air Coriel was powered by its gifted and daring pass catchers. The most flamboyant of this group was wide receiver John Jefferson. JJ was our deep threat. He was our big play guy. When we ran that uh, deep eight route, that inside eight, or that quick slant, you miss John Jefferson, he's gone. If the ball was thrown anywhere in his zip code, you knew that John Jefferson was going to catch that ball. If the defender was right there next to him, you knew he was going to come up with that football. And his timing on jumps when he's running down the sideline and jumping over a defender unparalleled. In 1980, Jefferson caught 13 touchdown passes. He also led the NFL with over 1,300 receiving yards while averaging over 16 yards per catch. Charlie Joyner's contributions to Jefferson's totals were often subtle but highly effective. While Jefferson was the Chargers flashy big playmaker, Joyner was San Diego's dependable proven pro. Charlie Joyner, mid-range receiver. Uh, the wily veteran who knew what zone the defense was going to play before they played it. Who was so in sync with uh, Dan Fouts, you became jealous of their relationship. You were envious of their relationship, how they worked so well together. For a time, Charlie Joyner was the NFL's all-time leading receiver. And in 1980, his talents produced over 1,100 yards on 71 receptions. With Joyner and Jefferson outside, San Diego's offense exploded with the addition of tight end Kellen Winslow, number 80, who led the league with 89 receptions in 1980. Opponents who chose to double cover the Chargers' wideouts were burned down the middle by a 6'5", 245-pound tight end who literally opened up the San Diego offensive attack. I think it opened up everything. I mean, it opened up the secondary because now you had to pay a lot of attention inside to the tight end. Now you had to keep some safeties home. Now the linebackers couldn't drop as deep to take a shot at you on those slants throughout that we spoke of. They all have to stay at home, which opened up a lot of things outside for Charlie and myself. And also, with Charlie and myself outside, it opened up a lot of things for Kellen when he came in. The numbers that this trio posted were staggering. We played the New York Giants in San Diego. 
It was the first time in the history of the National Football League that three receivers in a game, the true receivers, two wide receivers and a tight end, all went over 100 yards receiving in the same ball game. I think it was the first time in NFL history that three receivers, again, the two, the two receivers and the tight end, each went over 1,000 yards for the season. We were statistically uh, listed in the top five in the AFC in all three major categories, touchdowns, receptions, and yardage. I think we all thrived on the fact that we respected each other's abilities and that there was enough balls to go around. JJ's catch was my catch. Charlie's touchdown was my touchdown. I know they were just as, as happy for me when I did something. It was like we all did the same thing and we all went to one pot. In just two shining seasons, the way these men played the game has made them unforgettable. He's got it for the Their physical skills and records are but a part of the true story of this unique receiving trio. For you see, their real lasting legacy is the mutual respect each earned as a member of pro football's greatest receiving unit. Okay, yeah, you did. All right, you, you taught me to catch it one hand, but let's admit it. The best was Charlie Jordan. Okay. Charlie, let me think about it. He was the best. Well, he, he was, was the oldest the best. and he was the best. He was the best. He was the smartest and that's he was true. the best. Yeah, he was. Now, Dan thought he was the best. Well, that's another subject. But he couldn't catch. He couldn't run. He was only quarterback. Well, he was overpaid. He didn't count. Now, the number one receiving core of all time, Air Coriel. Coryell just brought a complete pass again. He changed the whole outlook of San Diego football once he got there. If their offense was on the field, you didn't want to leave the room. If you would hold it, if you had to go to the bathroom, or you you were hungry, or you wouldn't want to blink. Throws it in the end zone for Chandler. He's got it. Touchdown, San Diego. That team gave the town exactly what they wanted. The lights were just on full time with that offense. He's going for Jefferson. He's got it. Fires a ball downfield, he's got Joyner, touchdown! He was so good that when our coaches were teaching the younger players how to run routes, they would say, watch Charlie. That's how you run that route. Charlie Joyner is the all-time leading receiver in the history of the National Football League. An NFL Ironman, Joyner played for 18 seasons and was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1996. Joining Charlie in the Hall of Fame is Kellen Winslow, who, it can be argued, is the best receiving tight end ever. Winslow was the X Factor. This guy reinvented the tight end position. He had the speed that most tight ends didn't. He had the hands most tight ends didn't. He could get in places that most tight ends couldn't. Everybody equates a passing team with a finesse soft team. Nobody called Kellen Winslow soft. At least they didn't call him soft twice. He would catch the ball, and then he had an attitude and that he was going to try to hurt somebody after it. Kellen Winslow, Hall of Fame. Charlie Joyner, Hall of Fame. Now you take John Jefferson, who in a brief window might have been the best of those guys. John Jefferson, just freakishly good. He's going for Jefferson. He's got it. I remember J.J. Jefferson being one of these guys that had a tremendous hunger for the ball. If he was going to be around it, he was going to get it. When he came into the National Football League, people said, put his name on the first ballot, Hall of Fame. Kellen, a friend of mine told me that you felt like you were the best receiver Chargers ever had. I mean, I was the best receiver while we were there. Okay, so I left early. years and the Charger fans when I first got to San Diego through some really thin times and we had some poor teams they never gave up on us the Charger backers were one of the biggest fan clubs in the entire league and we as players appreciated the way that they hung in there with us and you know when John Jefferson got to San Diego in 1978 he really embraced the fans he got them excited he gave us Charger power and, of course, he gave me a lot of great catches.